I invite you to stand as you are able for today's gospel reading. It is from the book of Mark, the first chapter, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands, and even the unclean spirits... They obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. May the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my God, my rock and my Redeemer. The gospel we just read has some vivid imagery, especially the image of the unclean spirit being vanquished from the man in the synagogue. But as tempting as it may be for us to just focus on that image, I don't believe that the unclean spirit is the primary reason that Mark authored this passage. There is another more subtle, yet more powerful image in this passage. The authority of Jesus. Well, that's what I believe Mark was writing about. But why? Why? When my girls were little, and I just want to say this, I was super smart in my 20s. I managed to have three girls in three and a half years. And so they were really close in age. Many times, I felt like they were in a competition as to which one of them could say the word why. Now initially, I would answer each question correctly and calmly as possible. But as my inquisitive little beauties continued, I could feel my patience, ooh, and it was weakening. Still. I put on my happy face and I fought the good fight, trying to remain oh so patient and oh so kind. But eventually in my weariness, I gave the worst answer that any self-respecting parent could utter. How many of you know what that is? <laughs> oh, so we all know because I said so. Yes, Hannah, Emily, and Catherine, because I said so. But there is another way that we could respond to the why that has more authority. Eli, I am so glad that you come here to Lord of Life and you go to Caring Kingdom. Why? Well, because you learn about God and special stories from the Bible. Why? Well, Eli, did you know that God loves you very much? Why? Because you are a child of God. Why? Well, 
Because God gave you wonderful gifts. Why? So that you could share those gifts with others. Why? Well, God sent his son to die for your sins. Why? Because you are that special to God. Why? Because no matter how many times you ask why, God will always love you. Why? Because Jesus said so. <laughs> Eli is truly a star. He's only four. He's adorable. Like Eli and my girls, when I began studying our passage for today, I started asking why. Why did Jesus go to Capernaum? Why did he start teaching in that particular synagogue? Why did they think he taught as one having authority? And why did that unclean spirit know who Jesus was and the others didn't? Why did Jesus tell that unclean spirit to be silent before he cast him out? And why? Why was Jesus reve revealing his authority there at that particular time? Why? Why? Well, to start with, Jesus and his disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they were in Capernaum because they moved there after hearing of John the Baptist's arrest. And Capernaum was a thriving town with great wealth and great sin. It was also the headquarters of many influential Roman troops. And it was the ideal place for Jesus to challenge both the Jews and the non-Jews with the gospel. And what if I told you that Jesus was accustomed to going to the synagogue on the Sabbath? And according to the Gospels, Jesus was there with his disciples and he began to teach because this was the beginning of his public ministry. Jesus had the authority to teach whatever he wanted. Well, unlike the scribes, who taught quoting others because they had no inherent authority. The people were amazed at his teaching because he was so unlike the scribes. His teaching was with personal authority and his authority was based neither on credentials nor his ability to cite practices, but it was based on the spirit that had descended upon him at his baptism. Jesus is the Son of God, and his authority comes from God. His message, it was new and compelling because it was the truth. Now, the unclean spirit recognized Jesus and knew exactly who he was, the Holy One of God. And the spirit knew that Jesus could destroy him. But I am still surprised by the difference between the response of the unclean spirit and the response of the people. Now, the authority of Jesus, it amazed the people and terrified the spirit. Well, the people kind of wondered, and the unclean spirit panicked. I think this was because the people, they really didn't know who Jesus was. But that unclean spirit did. Still think that's kind of strange. I wonder why. The book of John says this, he was in the world and the world was made 
by him, and the world knew him not. So this miracle of casting out the unclean spirit, it provided Jesus with credentials because only God has that kind of power. And Jesus taught as one who had authority. And now he is showing power as well. It was necessary that our Lord should at once assert his absolute power over that unclean spirit. And not only this, but also that he should show that he wanted nothing to do with that. When the unclean spirit disrupted the meeting, Jesus simply ordered him, be silent and leave. And it left. Again, the people in the synagogue, they had never seen anything like it. Who, who could have such authority that even the spirits obey his word? The power of casting out unclean spirits, again, we just see this over and over. It's totally new to them. But it authenticated Jesus and his identity in God. Jesus told that unclean spirit to be silent because he didn't want the unclean spirit declaring who he was. Jesus wasn't seeking publicity. And he certainly didn't want an unclean spirit publicizing him. Jesus has the authority to heal the sick, to forgive sin, and to cast out unclean spirits. And it was done by a word. Jesus did it in his own name, by his own authority. And this proved that he was superior to all spirits. And Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the country. Jesus was not only teaching the scriptures, but he was also teaching and proclaiming the nearness of God's kingdom and calling people to a personal response. Jesus' message, it was urgent. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. And he had the authority to deliver that message. Now this connection between teaching and authority is deliberate. Jesus taught with authority about the coming of God's kingdom, and he demonstrated that authority in his power over the unclean spirit. When Jesus actually drove out that unclean spirit right in front of them, he was demonstrating the truth that he was teaching. The timing of this passage is approaching the persecution of Jesus, and ultimately his death upon the cross. It was important for him to impose and to illustrate his authority, helping to reinforce his identity as the very Son of God. And this message, this message is just as important to us today as it was then. You and I, we need to know the authority of Jesus. We need to learn his teachings and respect that he is the Son of God. Currently in Word for Women, we're studying prayer. And our recent lesson focused on the authority of Christ and the power of praying in Jesus' name. John 14 tells us this, You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, let's look at this. Here Jesus is not promising his disciples anything and everything they want. Rather, 
He is instructing them to ask in my name. To pray in Jesus' name is to pray on the basis of Jesus' authority. We're appealing to God with the authority of Jesus in the name of Jesus when we intervene in the lives and the matters of good for those that we pray. God gave us the gift of authority through the name of Jesus. So, when the wise abound, when you don't have all the answers, the authority of Jesus does, because he said so. Amen.